Okay, so in this video, I will first be given an argument as to why Eric Ten Hag should be United's next manager, and then why Pochettino should be United's next manager. I'll then point out the concerns around Ten Hag being appointed, and then my concerns around Pochettino being appointed. And then at the end, I'll be weighing up all the points I've made, and giving you my overall verdict on who should be United's next manager. Now, because I will be given two completely different arguments throughout the video, in order to make it balanced, there will be a few contradictions throughout the video. So make sure you watch the whole video because at the end I will be tying up any loose ends and finding holes in my own argument as well. But before I go any further, for cheap good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfever.com. I myself have bought a number of different jerseys from Jersey Fever, including this 2003-2004 Manchester United shirt with Ronaldo on the back and this one's probably my favourite. So if you want a shirt like this, be sure to click the link in the description below and use code ALANTISFOOTBALL with a space to get 5% off. So why should Eric Ten Hag be Manchester United's next manager? Well, first and foremost, tactically, Ten Hag is one of the best managers in world football at the moment. I did do a full video breaking down Ten Hag's system at Ajax and how he would set up Manchester United. So I won't go into the tactical side in too much detail here. I'll leave that video linked in the description if you are interested. But in short, the 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 that Ten Hag does use at Ajax is very tactically fluid and adaptable. In possession, Ajax can switch to a 3-2-2-3, a 3-3-1-3 or a 2-3-2-3 shape in the build-up phase, which varies depending on the pressing shape that the opposition is using, as well as if they're using a zonal or man-to-man -man press. The positional fluidity means that Ten Hag's United will be adaptable game to game and sometimes change throughout a game as well. Well, which I think is crucial at the top level. We see Pep City and Klopp's Liverpool constantly shifting between possession shapes. Sometimes Pep inverts the two fullbacks alongside Rodri, creating a 2-3 shape with the deepest five players. Or if he wants a wider base to circulate the ball, we do see Walker dropping deep to create a wide back three, with Cancelo on the left retaining a narrower and higher position. We also see Klopp vary his possession shape as well, with sometimes Robertson retaining a deeper position, whilst Alexander-Arnold pushes forward down the right, and sometimes it's Alexander-Arnold sitting deep, moving into a narrower position in the midfield, whilst Robertson pushes forward down the flank. Under Solskjaer and still even under Ranić to a degree, United's possession shape is very predictable. Under Solskjaer, United would drop into a 2-4-3-1 with a deep double pivot. And now under Ranić, that is more of a 2-3-2-3. However, there isn't much variation and so it does make it easy for the opposition side to set up a pressing shape to nullify United's ability to work the ball out of the defensive third, usually by man-to-man -man pressing United and forcing them out to the fullbacks. Ten Hag's Ajax side not only can change positional shapes, but they also have the tactical understanding to know when to do this. We see this with either one of the central midfielders dropping wide or deep to open up a passing lane to receive the ball, or we often see Masrawi invert on the right, dragging the opposition's left sided midfielder in field to open up the passing lane out to Anthony high on the right flank. This adaptability in possession would make United a lot harder to press, enabling them to play out of pressing situations, working the ball into the middle third and being able to retain possession a lot better, but ultimately also being able to exploit the space in behind the opposition's high press, where there is more space in behind the central midfield and between the lines, making it easier for United to then work the ball into the final third, which is something they currently struggle with. Out of possession, I also think Ten Hag would significantly improve United, making them a lot more coordinated in their press and therefore, not only is United's ability to win the ball back high up the pitch going to significantly improve, but I also think this will overall have a significant impact on their defensive record, allowing them to keep more clean sheets. And if you are keeping more clean sheets, it's inevitable that you will win more games and pick up more points. This season, United have conceded 40 goals in the league, just the 11th best in the league, below the likes of Brighton, Palace and Burnley. And this isn't even from bad luck or poor goalkeeping or good finishing, as they rank 13th when it comes to expected goals against, with 42.49 goals, which shows that defensively United are mid-table at best. On the contrary, Ajax have been immaculate defensively this season, conceding the least goals of any Eredivisie side with just 13 goals in 27 games, 14 less than the second best defensive side Feyenoord, who have conceded 27. So not only is Ten Hag going to improve United in possession, making them a lot better when trying to play out of the high press and break down deep defensive units as well, he's also going to make them more effective when pressing high up the pitch and having a better defensive shape, which should allow United to keep more clean sheets. 
But I don't think that Ten Hag is only going to improve United as a team tactically. I also expect him to improve individual players, particularly United's young players. At Ajax, Ten Hag first created a side capable of going to the latter stages of the Champions League, with young homegrown talents like Frankie de Jong, Matthias de Ligt, Donny van der Beek and Andre Onana playing key roles, whilst then rebuilding the side when key players left, and now his current Ajax side has been built around many young players, with young players like Lissandro Martinez, Edison Alvarez and Anthony developing into critical first team players, alongside players who came through the Ajax youth setup like Masraoui, Gravenberch and Timber. So with United having some fantastic young players bubbling under the first team, I can see Ten Hag being the perfect manager to turn them from promising young talents into top level players. I can see James Garner and Hannibal Medjbri in particular thriving under Ten Hag, with Garner developing into a player capable of playing the same sort of regista role, similar to Sergio Busquets at Barcelona in 2008 when Guardiola first came in. Whilst Medjbri could become the long-term Pogba replacement, being more of a roaming playmaker who has the ball-carrying ability and creativity to play that force eight role. I could also see Dylan Levitt and Ethan Galfbraith breaking into the first team as well, with both being very astute technical players, and I think Ilanga could be moulded into the type of inside forward that Pedro was under Pep Guardiola at Barcelona, but I am also interested to see how Amad Diallo develops under Ten Hag, as with Ten Hag using wide traditional wingers, I think this could suit Diallo playing from the right side and being utilised in a similar kind of way to how Ten Hag uses Anthony at Ajax at the minute. I have done some individual player analysis videos on all of these United youngsters that I have mentioned so I will leave them linked in a playlist in the description below. So we've covered Ten Hag but why should Pochettino be Manchester United manager? Well Pochettino has a greater track record at different clubs and Premier League clubs as well whereas Ten Hag's only managed Utrecht and Ajax in the Eredivisie. Pochettino first came to England in January 2013 with Southampton. And when he first arrived, he was under immediate pressure and scrutiny by the press, having replaced a fan favourite in Nigel Atkins and facing a relegation battle with Southampton. However, by the end of that season, he had kept Southampton in the Premier League, and then by 2013-14, the next season, he had not only completely changed Southampton's style of play, changing them from a low-block direct counter-attacking side into a high-pressing, position-oriented team, but it also brought success as well, with Southampton finishing in eighth, just eight points behind Manchester United, in Pochettino's first full season in England and at St Mary's. This of course led to him getting the Tottenham job and it's fair to say that he performed absolute miracles. I feel like as the years have gone on people have diluted how successful Pochettino was at Tottenham because he didn't win a trophy which is one of the most absurd arguments regarding managers as that means that people think that if Pochettino had say won an FA Cup or a Europa League with Tottenham but finished fourth or fifth every season that would have made him better suited to the Manchester United job than getting Tottenham to challenge for the title in 2016 and 2017 and becoming a constant in the top four by consistently finishing in the top four and also getting Tottenham to the 2019 Champions League final. I just don't see how winning a solitary FA Cup like Arteta at Arsenal or a Europa League like Mourinho at Manchester United is more impressive than what Pochettino did at Tottenham. You also have to factor in the context behind Pochettino's Tottenham. If you remember when he took over in 2014, he inherited that disaster post Bale Tottenham squad where the seven or eight players signed to replace Bale after his Real Madrid move the summer before had not worked out at all. In Pochettino's first season, Tottenham brought in the likes of Federico Fazio, Ben Davis, Deli Ali, Stambouli and Eric Dyer, not exactly a star-studded cast. In fact, throughout Pochettino's tenure, the signings that Tottenham made and money that was spent makes the job Pochettino did even more impressive. Players like Toby Alderweireau, Deli Ali and Hyung Min Son were brought in in 2015, however they were nowhere near the level that they would reach in the latter years. And this will tie into my next point about Pochettino in terms of player development. The season after in 2016 Sissoko, Vincent Janssen and Wanyama were all brought in, hardly players you'd expect to carry a manager. The season after that it was Lucas Moura, Davis and Sanchez, Serge Aurier and Llorente and the summer after in 2018 Tottenham didn't sign anyone. So the fact that that season not only did Pochettino get fourth yet again but he also took Tottenham to the Champions League final. That's Tottenham hot the end at Tottenham midway through the next season and people do use that as a reason against picking him as Manchester United manager. But I think that's just as absurd as the how many trophies trophies has he won argument as Poch really should have gone in the summer of 2019 and it was clear that the project had fatigued but he obviously wasn't going to walk away and lose a massive payday. But this does happen to managers. In 2014-2015 Klopp's Borussia Dortmund were down by the relegation zone midway through the season. 
and only pulled it back to a 7th place finish at the end because of an excellent run of form towards the end of the season. So by that same logic, the critics of Pochettino wouldn't want Klopp as United manager because he had a terrible last season at Borussia Dortmund and would have been sacked but for him deciding to leave at the end of the season anyway. Carlo Ancelotti has been sacked multiple times, as was Tuchel at PSG and at Dortmund, and so this is easily one of the stupidest arguments I've heard against Pochettino being Manchester United manager. But my point was that Pochettino has proven his ability to build squads with Premier League sides in a relatively short period of time, to completely transform the prospects of a club as he did at Southampton and at Tottenham and these are both Premier League teams. But Pochettino like Ten Hag is also a fantastic developer of players. Having players like Deli Alli, Alderweireld, Harry Kane, Kyle Walker, Christian Eriksen, Hyung Min Son, Jan Vertonghen and Moussa Dembele develop into top level players under his management. And he managed to get the best out of what would be considered mid-level talented players like Eric Dyer, Ben Davis, Danny Rose, Lucas Moura, Sissoko and Eric Lamella and getting them to perform at peak level making them crucial to Tottenham's Champions League and title challenges. This is exactly the quality that the next Manchester United manager needs as I would definitely say that the likes of Fred, McTominay, Alanga, Van der Beek and Bailly are in that latter category of players that at the moment aren't considered at a good enough level for United going forward but potentially could become vital squad players under Pochettino. Chitino. Whilst players like Diego Dalo, Victor Lindelof, Luke Shaw, Marcus Rashford, Anthony Martial, James Garner and Hannibal Medjbury could be the type of players who under Pochettino transition from decent Manchester United options to top level players by refining certain parts of their game. If Pochettino can work the same magic with the players at Manchester United as he did at Tottenham, then United could have a completely different quality of squad within a year or so, without a massive overhaul of players. But I also think that Pochettino's tactical style could suit United a lot better than Ten Hogs, particularly in the short term. But before I break down why, if you do need some protection for your phone, but you also want the case to look stylish and have a unique design, then go over to El Clasico cases. Not only are they all £20 or under, but they also have a money back guarantee if you aren't satisfied. But I can't see how you wouldn't be happy with any of these cases. They've got a wide variety for Manchester United fans. They've got Fergie time. They've got Cantona's Kung Fu kick. They've got Ronaldo's Sioux celebration. They've also got cases for some of the most iconic players like Ronaldinho, Messi, Neymar, as well as some controversial moments like Zidane's head bar and Cantona's Kung Fu kick. So if you do like the look of these and you do want to help support the channel, then I'll leave a link in the description below. Also, if you use code AF at checkout, you'll also get a massive 25% off. So throughout most of his managers, managerial career, Pochettino has stuck with a high pressing style most of the time, which we saw this season against Real Madrid in the first leg of the Champions League round of 16 tie, with PSG pressing Madrid high up the pitch in their build up phase, pretty much man to man everywhere on the pitch. He also used this pressing style at Tottenham and Southampton in his narrow 4-2-3-1 shape, but he can switch things up if needed, as he did in the second leg against Real Madrid this season, where PSG sat a lot deeper, inviting Madrid onto them, and whilst this didn't work out in the end, it was this game plan that enabled PSG to go ahead, breaking quickly and utilising Mbappe's running in behind. In possession, Pochettino does like to build out from the back, but he doesn't do it as religiously as Ten Hag, which may suit United as currently they don't have the kind of players who thrive when playing out under pressure. And so this ability to change up the on the ball approach could benefit United next season, could benefit them a lot more than a strict possession orientated style. Pochettino also tends to use a quicker transition and attack than Ten Hag, looking for direct vertical passes forward a lot earlier in the build-up, which as we've seen under Ranić definitely suits this Manchester United side, with players like Fernandes, Sancho and Pogba able to get on the ball in space a lot more often when the ball is moved forward quickly, and players like Ronaldo, Rashford and Alanga being able to provide those runs in behind the back line. But I also think that there are overlooked attributes of Pochettino's that could aid him at United, at PSG and even Tottenham to a degree, he's worked under some big personalities, and whilst at PSG this hasn't been a success in the Champions League, I still think he's managed the dressing room pretty well and this is definitely needed in the next Manchester United manager. With the United dressing room being in constant turmoil, under Solskjaer and Ranić and even Mourinho before them. People also point to the fact that Ten Hag has won league titles at Ajax and Pochettino wasn't able to do this at Tottenham, but I think this is the most ridiculous of all the criticisms against Pochettino as Ten Hag is at Ajax, who are always going to be in the top three of the Eredivisie, whilst Pochettino was at Tottenham. And I'm not taking anything away from Ten Hag's success at Ajax as when he took over, Ajax hadn't won the league in the previous three seasons. However, I think that if Pochettino was at Ajax, I think he still wins league titles as well and he's also able to create a pretty good team as well 
And if Ten Hag was at Tottenham, I also don't think he wins trophies. Maybe he wins an FA Cup or a League Cup, but it's hard to make the argument that many managers in world football would have done a better job at Tottenham than Pochettino did, and so I would completely dismiss that argument. Pochettino, like Ten Hag, also speaks English well, but also understands how the English media works, which is definitely a bonus, as I do think it aids a manager in dealing with the external pressure throughout his tenure and getting his coaching methods across to the players. So overall, I think Pochettino could be the best option for United as their next manager because he has proved himself both at Southampton and at Tottenham in the Premier League over a sustained period of time, transforming their styles and successes of both sides in a short period of time and doing so without a massive expenditure in the transfer market, and instead developing existing what you would call average level players into crucial squad players and turning young players and players with potential into top level talents. His tactical flexibility and quicker transition in attack is also something that suits this United squad and his English speaking and experience with the English media and big personalities are all bonuses for him in regards to taking this United job. So now I've gone through the arguments for why Ten Hag and Pochettino should be Manchester United manager, but what are the potential downsides to each appointment? Well, we'll start with Ten Hag and the obvious one to me is that whilst he has had a great deal of success with Ajax, completely transforming them in a similar way to how Pochettino transformed Tottenham, he has done this with one club and arguably the best run club in the world, with some of the best infrastructure in terms of the academy and board to support him. And Ajax do have a conveyor belt of talent coming through their youth setup, who have been coached through their teens to play in a particular style that allows them to transition into Ten Hag's first team a lot easier than the United youngsters will be able to transition into the United first team. This means that whereas players like De Jong, De Ligt, Gravenberch and Donny van der Beek were able to become critical first team players relatively quickly, this may not be the same case for the likes of Garner, Medjbri and Diallo. Also, I would say that Pochettino's success at Tottenham came in spite of the board rather than because of it. And we all know that the Manchester United board is a lot more dysfunctional than Tottenham's and worlds apart from the setup at Ajax. So this would be my main concern, but also the fact that Ten Hag hasn't really had to manage big personalities at Ajax does put into question how he will deal with the inevitable dressing room issues that arise at United. However, the fact that Ten Hag does speak very good English does give him an advantage over other foreign managers who have to learn on the job. But I will address whether these potential issues would sway my opinion on Ten Hag when I come to my verdict. For Pochettino, my main concern is actually something that could be one of his strengths, and that is his tactical adaptability. Now, the reason I say this is because I think with Ten Hag, he'll come into United with a clear plan, not just of how he wants to play, but also of the attributes that existing players need to develop and what he needs in new signings because he'll have a clear defined philosophy and plan that he'll follow. Now Pochettino's style is very much a high pressing one, front foot and offensive. However, I'm more talking about in terms of the system and player roles that he will use and what could happen is that he starts off with one system, tinkers to another and United don't really nail down a set way of playing which leads to inconsistency not just on the field but also in the transfer market. With United already not clearly having a defined strategy going forward from top to bottom, I think it's possible that Pochettino gets swept along with the confusion, signing players who don't fit into what he wants later down the line. Also, his spell at PSG could throw up questions about whether he can get the best out of big names, creating an effective system as at PSG, his use of Neymar, Mbappe and Neymar against Real Madrid in the second leg definitely played somewhat of a part in their eventual collapse. United need a manager who isn't afraid to make big controversial calls, as without them United will just follow what they've already been doing and what's already been happening in the last few years. So what's my overall verdict? Well out of the two, I would prefer Ten Hag, as I think at this point in time United need a complete transformation, and I think that Ten Hag is a better option for a rebuild than Pochettino, as he has a clearly defined philosophy, style and system, which I think lends itself to building a team for the long term. If we look at Liverpool and Manchester City's success over the past decade, the basis of that has been Klopp and Pep's philosophy being printed into the club's DNA, and this means that every single signing made and every young player promoted fits into an exact role and this means that year on year both sides continue to improve because they are adding crucial parts to their arsenals. But this all comes from having a system on the pitch in place that is clear and can be transmitted to the players by the respective coaches. I'm not saying that Pochettino can't do this but I think with him being more tactically adaptable he may not have a nailed down idea of how he wants to play and what players he needs which could result in another uncoordinated transfer window for United where players are signed and then because Pochettino changes his system throughout 
the season, some players don't fit in, and there are areas in the squad that need improving, but players weren't signed in the transfer window. So I think Ten Hag's clearly defined philosophy is definitely what United need right now. I also think that both managers would do wonders with young players like Medjbri and Garner, and players like Fred, Dallo, Lindelof, Rashford, Van der Beek, Elanga and Shaw would all improve under both managers. But Ten Hag's recent record with young players at Ajax does make me lean towards him. Also, in general, I think Ten Hag is a slightly better tactical manager in terms of being able to set up a side in the system and work towards improving that system for the long term, which I think is what United need to do in order to have any chance of competing with Liverpool or Manchester City. And so whilst I do think that either would be good appointments as Manchester United's next manager, Eric Ten Hag would be my first choice. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give the video a like to help it in the algorithm. Put your thoughts in the comment section, subscribe to the channel and click the bell and check out some of my other Manchester United analysis videos which will be linked in the description below.